Hey guys, how you doing today? Ed Frolish with Ocean Deep Fishing. And today, I'm really excited because this is a video I'm going to go through some of the equipment that we are going to be taking with us down to the Keys. He's staying in Cutcho Key, and we're going to be going after some uh, Mahi Mahi open May 1st, so grouper season's open, so hopefully we'll tag a few of those. And uh, Red Snapper is, I believe, is still out down there. I'd have to double check on there, but um, definitely Yellowtail and Mangrove Snapper on there, so we're hoping to catch a few of those. So anyway, uh, I'm going to be showing you some of the equipment that we're going to be taking with us, uh, some of the new equipment that I bought, and uh, just tell you a little bit about how we fish down there and what we like to do. So stay tuned. I'm a big fan of pen reels. I've had pen ever since uh, I can remember going back when. I used to fish with Mitchells when I was a kid. The Zebco's 404 reels, you remember when you were a little kid, uh, I don't know if y'all got started with those, but that's how I always started with the Zebco 404. So, but anyway, uh, I've had a lot of different reels over there. I'm not saying that Penn's the best. There's other reels out there that are just as good or better, but I just find that Penn, for me, um, holds up well and does the job that I need. A good way to buy reels, and I've got this one right here that I bought. It's the Penn Spin Fisher V 6500 uh, series. Uh, and I got this at Bass Pro Shop. And what I did is I went shopping toward the end of the season of last year, uh, maybe it was uh, end of fall, beginning of spring. And this is a discontinued unit. This unit sold for $199 at Bass Pro Shop. Um, they were bringing the new ones in this model for this year in spring. So they had a clearance on them for $99. So I bought three of them. So that is a way to save a little bit of money um, is to wait till the end of the season over there because a lot of places bring in the new um, series rods and reels and stuff over there. And uh, if they have any left, they have them at a good discount. So uh, anyway, so I bought three of these. I've got two on the table here. Um, I've got them spun with um, uh, 50 pound braided line. Um, be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of braided line. Um, I do like to use it on certain occasions, especially like reef fishing when you're bottom fishing uh, for grouper or red snapper and you got to pull them out of a wreck because you can really tighten down the drag and uh, pull them out of the wreck over there. So, But I'm a big fan of monofilm. And I, anyway, um, I've got this on an ugly stick power pole. It is the Shakespeare seven foot medium action rod. Um, and what I like about this rod, guys, and I'm going to tell you, when you go after a rod, and the rods always seem to be the problem because the eyelets right here are mostly, a lot of times, ceramic or plastic, and they pop out over. Well, these here, I found, they are aluminum eyes, and they're a single solid pressed eye, and they have a nice rounded contour. So I really like these a lot. Um, and these are on the new Shakespeare Power Pro rods. Um, I've bought two of these to match two of the reels that I bought. So really like them. Uh, and I suggest if you don't have one, you look into them because it saves a, a lot on replacing your eye. And like I said, I'm, I've been using pen rods and reels for a long time. So this is an older pen. It's still a 6500 series reel. Uh, I bought this probably back in 1985. Um, it's got a little wear and tear on it, as you can see over there. But um, for the most part, it's uh, really in good shape still. So if you spend the money in the beginning and buy a really good reel, whether it's this one or any other brand, and I'm not getting sponsored by Penn at all, but you buy a good reel, pay the money up front. Every season, you know, well, I always wash it down with soap and water every time that I've come back from there. I take uh, a bucket and a soft uh, scrub brush, I rinse it down and I go with the scrub brush all around, make sure you get all these crevices over there with a soft bristle brush with soapy water, rinse them off, and then I dry them in the sun and put them away. I do that every time that I go fishing. And then at the end of the season, I take it all apart. There's a gear in here, I clean it all, make sure it's all nice and uh, lubricated. Um, I take this handle off back here, four screws, there's gears in there, and there's uh, two wheels that operate the up and down part of the reel. I take all the old grease out, wipe them down, clean them with acetone, and then dry them out. And then I put all new grease in there, and I do that at the end of every season, the major um, work on them. And they'll last you a whole lifetime. Like I said, these, these were back in 1985 I bought those. Okay, so on the boat when we're trolling, 
I have um, four lines that I troll off of my boat. I got two flat lines, outriggers on this boat. I used to have outriggers on my other boat, so I used to have outrigger lines and flat lines. So anyway, these are just in the rod holders that hold the rod out to the side. So I fish um, four rods um, like that. Uh, two of my rods are going to be pen also, and they're the pen senators. They're the four rod um, reels. Um, this again, I got on sale. Um, they were on sale, not quite half price, but uh, at the end of the season, so I ended up buying one of these too because uh, my other ones are kind of getting a little bit old. So I troll usually with the lure, artificial lure like this. Um, I like to put this in the end of the wash from the motor. Uh, this will be a flat line, a short flat line, and I use another one of these as a long flat line. And then the two spinning reels like I just showed you, I put out one about three quarters of the way out and then I put one way out. Depending on how many people I have on the boat and that, um, I have uh, rocket launchers on the top. I will put a third, I mean a center rod out so you'll have five live lines trolling. And that one goes way, way, way out. And that's usually um, a skirted ballyhoo with the purple and black skirt or um, I will use a dolphin lure, trolling lure, which I'll show you later. Basically that's uh, the, four, the two types of rods I use, spinning rods and the four-aught uh, senators. So, and then when you're in the Keys or anywhere else, it's always good to have a pitch rod. So a pitch rod is just a rod that has a, a single hook on it. It could be a circle hook or just a straight J hook, usually about a four-aught to a six-aught hook, depending on you know where you're fishing. And I always have, especially in the Keys for when you come up to Mahi Mahi, sometimes there's a school of them around the boat. So I keep uh, a little buttercup dish full of chopped bait. It uh, does two things, is um, if you all of a sudden come up on a bunch of uh, fish, I can use those cut bait to pitch out to keep them around the boat. And I also use them on my pitch lines. So I always have at least two ready. Um, and it's a spinning reel over there. Um, basically what I end up doing is um, I have uh, all of my lines I end up with a barrel swivel on there because they turn and keep a lot of the twist out of the line. So I use one of those and then I'll use a 40, anywhere from a 20 to a 40 pound um, fluorocarbon leader with a two odd hook and I'll, I'll have these ready to pitch out in case we come across a cobia, in case we come across a dolphin, uh, even sailfish, I can hook a, a live uh, pinfish or greenie or um, goggle eye on there real quick and pitch them. So you always want a couple pitch rods um, ready. You don't want to ever come across a school of fish and all of a sudden you got to um, cut your lines, retie and everything. By the time you do all that, you know, chances are they're going to be gone. So you, it's going to be a missed opportunity. So always have two pitch lines. Uh, ready to go. So anyway, that's part of the reels that I use. Um, and then I'll, I'll have a couple other spinning rods. Now I go I go to Walmart. Usually in the beginning of spring they have a cheap um, spinning reel outfit. It's like 20 bucks. It's like a six and a half foot um, rod, little spinning reel. I usually take the line off of them because it comes with a cheap line on it and I'll usually put a new thing of like 15 or 20 pound monofilament line on there. And I use that for catching bait or um, just uh, if you come across a buoy or a log floating over there and you see some triple tail, they're okay, you know, they're light enough you can catch some triple tail and have fun fighting them in. So, but that basically that's about, um, that's about it as far as the equipment that I take over here in the Keys or anywhere offshore here in Central Florida. All right, well that's the end of this session over here. I'm gonna um, come back over here with some lures that we use. Um, and uh, explain those so anyway stay tuned be right back hey guys uh, back again we're going to go over some um, of the lures that we use for trolling and stuff uh, and this is just basic stuff um, you don't have to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on artificial lures and stuff over there they are expensive um, but I'm just going to go over some of the ones that maybe for uh, 60 bucks you can get a wide variety of um, lures that work really well um, you know, live bait, we use live bait as well. Um, we'll, uh, what we call bump troll. So I'll use a pinfish, goggle eye or whatever, put it on a single hook. 
when we ever come across structure or maybe even a weed line um, and you can't see any fish but you know there's fish there because underneath the weeds are just a ton of bait fish. Uh, bump trolling is you put the motor in gear, you go a little bit and back it off over there and then just drift. And you just keep doing that on and on and on. So it takes a long time for you to get anywhere but um, uh, that'll bring some fish that you can't see because a lot of times the dolphin, they're, they're 30, 40 foot underneath those weed lines swimming around over there and they come up You'll see them come up to the weeds and bust the weeds over there. They'll feed for a while and then they'll go back down and sound to 30, 40 foot and that's where they like to swim at. Weed line looks really heavy. You see a lot of bait underneath it. You just don't see the dolphin. You've, you fast troll back and forth. You haven't had a hit. Um, try uh, bump trolling because uh, that really works for us. Anyway, let's get to the lures. Okay guys, so here's a box. I have some stuff in over there. Um, I wanted to show you that's a uh, purple and black, that's no, actually pink and black um, skirt. Uh, purple and black also works pretty well. Uh, we use that for trolling behind uh, or skirting a ballyhoo over there. And I have these um, fast rigs that I you can make your own ballyhoo rigs. You can see, so you can see the bait, beaded chain. It's a six aught straight J hook over there. There's a little wire. Uh, with a hook on it that you can um, you put it up the anal fin of the ballyhoo go up through the mouth and you hook it onto this you can see right here it has a little hook eyelet you put that on there and you pull that through so at the very end this ends up being right at the anal uh, of the ballyhoo you can just cover this with any sort of a skirt or anything that you want um, I've got the purple purple and black. This is a really good one for kingfish. Kingfish and wahoo seem to like those colors for whatever reason. Uh, and then we have uh, this one here that's good for a dolphin. Uh, they hit dolphin if they're hungry they're gonna hit anything but uh, on particular finicky days they do have particular things that they like. So and then uh, of course you have your sea witches um, and that just makes like a broad fan that's in front of the ballyhoo. So you put that like this, and this large part here of there will fan back, and it'll cover your ballyhoo as you're trolling over there. So that's one of the one of the other things we use. One of the most popular ones I use all the time. Uh, it's always trolling, and it's always on one line, no matter where we go. Is this one here it's a dolphin delight they come in several different colors they're not expensive I think they're like six or seven bucks a pop let's see if this has a price on it no uh, it comes pre-rigged it's got a six aught J hook right in there it's on wire so if you remember I showed you uh, oh let's see I, I have um, on all my lines on my trolling rigs I use a barrel swivel over there and the barrel swivels are good because they turn they've got ball bearings in them so they're not just turning on a piece of wire and they keep uh, they really do a good job while you're trolling on keeping the lures and the lines um, from being twisted so much um, anyway uh, that's what I use on all my lines and then I just uh, pop this off and hook on whatever trolling lure or ballyhoo that I'm going to be using. Now here's another Dolphin Delight. This is another favorite color that I like to use. It's kind of an orangey red with white feathers. Um, they seem to hit that pretty well. So on most of my trolls, I always have this out. Always, always that color. That does really well. And then I usually have two skirted ballyhoos and then a number of options of the fourth one is depending on what I have. Now this is what I've pre-made to go down there. I have several of these made out of seven different colors. Um, I bought this uh, from uh, Bath Pro Shop. Um, they come in a package of, actually I take that back, I ordered this online. They come in a package of um, six different colors in a package. Um, but they come in six different colors. I pre-rigged them. Um, as you can see, I have um, a six-aught J-hook. Um, 
I have uh, beaded beads. Now all these beads do is keep the hook at the right length. So what you want to do is you want the hook to be right at the end of the feathers. Where the feathers come on, you want that right there. Okay, so that's it. And I have uh, three or four colors made up of that. I've got um, 30 pound wire leader that I've twisted up myself. So this is all made at the house. And while you're sitting watching TV, you can twist a bunch of them up, have them in your tackle box. The heavy duty stretch 30, or I'm sorry, it's not the 30, it's the 12. It's dolphin color. So I don't know if you know it, but dolphin love to eat baby dolphin. Um, that is a brand new lure. I haven't used this one yet, but my last one had all kinds of teeth marks on it. Oh, let's see, look at this here. All right, when you come back in, if you have any structure that's in like 100, 100 foot or less, you always want to have uh, couple of these here um, they are uh, jigging baits they're weighted um, they have a hook on and a lot of people think that you use them this way where you put the, the line to this end and the hook dangles from behind but that's not true when you put these on you want the hook to hang forward like this and you want to hook your line here and you're going to be jigging up and down from here so the hook is on top not on the bottom over there but it, that does the white one does pretty well I also have a couple different colored ones I have this pink one right here this has got your lure 150 grain lead it comes with a um, uh, heat shrink wrap on it and I believe that's like a six aught heavy duty hook that's on there so but basically other than using ballyhoo and stuff that's uh that's it for my rig okay guys one more thing before we go um, I wanted to take this out of the package I ordered this on uh, Amazon it was from eatmytackle.com not a sponsor of those either or they're not a sponsor of me um, I just like their products um, so it's a daisy chain of like little squid um, and if I'm not fishing a center line sometimes I'll troll this as a center line instead of that um, every once in a while I'll use an outrigger line um, to put one of these on basically a splasher they call this a splasher that's the very front one over there that's going to go in the water and splash and make a commotion and then you're going to have three trailers and the last one which is behind it is the one that has the hook in it so it's only got a one hook on there so a lot of times they'll hit these two as well because it looks like a school of fish going by but uh, there's only one hook in there basically it's to draw them up and when they get hit on you get one on this here um, a lot of times you can bring them to the boat and if there are schoolies of dolphin usually they'll follow them to the boat so you can end up catching uh, more we're going to try to do some bottom fishing over some of the reefs over there i've never fished out of cutcho key that's the uh, farthest south i've uh, fished over there because normally i fish out of island morado or long key um, so uh, or uh, marathon so this is going to be uh, a little new territory for me so i don't have any numbers or anything uh, that I'm used to fishing for down there. So anyway, we're gonna give it a shot. So I hope you enjoyed this Subscribe below, please give a thumbs up and don't forget to Hit the notification tab there the bell so that you get notified on our next video So until we see you again tight lines. Hope you catch a big one